On this episode of Fee-Based Financial Planning Mastery, I'm going to show you how to be able to articulate your value to clients, which seems to be the one thing that's eluding financial advisors these days. In essence, I'm going to show you how to productize your fee-based financial planning business so you can provide clients with a much clearer understanding of the value you bring to the table in exchange for the revenue that you're receiving. Running a successful fee-based financial planning business is tough, and escaping the shackles of a commission-based financial planning practice is terrifying. When all you want to do is learn from those who know, learn from financial planners who are there on the front lines doing it each and every day. What if you could just open their kimono and take a look inside to learn what works and what doesn't? Now there's a place where the secrets to running a fee-based financial planning business are revealed to those who believe. Fee-Based Financial Planning Mastery. Ease your mind. Hi everyone, it's Scott Plaskett here and thanks for joining me. In this podcast, you will learn what's working and what's not in the world of fee-based financial planning. In each episode, I'm going to open my kimono and let you take an insider's look at what's working and what's not in my practice to help you take your business to the next level. I've been a fee-based certified financial planner since the early 90s, so believe me, I know the challenges you're facing. So get ready to learn not from a teacher, coach, or guru but from a colleague who's on the front lines just like you. And I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my email internet newsletter to get the most up-to-date tips on how to build and grow your fee-based financial planning practice by going to feebasedfinancialplanningmastery.com. And now for our feature segment. Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to outline how to productize your financial planning business so that you can show clients in advance of working with them the value that they will receive for the fees that they're going to pay. It's important that the fee-based financial planner be able to properly articulate their value to their, to their relationships to help these relationships gain clarity on what it is that they're paying for. The real payoff is that after you've developed and outlined your business model and how your clients receive value from it, you as the fee-based financial planner will be able to enter into each and every conversation about your business with confidence and clarity, which will allow you to determine early on whether or not you should be even investing the time into that particular discussion. By completing this section, you'll gain clarity on what your core offer is and be able to explain this through your promise to your clients and to show them through your process. Being able to successfully productize your business will provide you with your very own competitive advantage. This effectively eliminates the competition for your services by putting you in a category of your own. Nobody can compare you to anything else because the business you create will be a true extension of you, your philosophies and methodologies. Productizing your services will allow you to own this space. Nobody else will have a business quite like yours. So when a client compares you to others, you will stand apart because your business experience will be different than all of the others who follow the traditional sales of an investment or insurance product approach. The ultimate goal here is for you to create what I like to call a lifestyle business, one that supports your lifestyle as opposed to one that you become a slave to. Going through the steps and successfully productizing your business will provide you with renewed energy for your business or provide you with the proper foundation to build your new business on. Being able to have better conversations with relationships and new introductions so that they see you in a different light than the traditional one that's shone on the financial services industry right now will allow you to have more conversations that will result in more ideal clients who fully embrace your business model. Not productizing your services will force you down a path of not being able to articulate your value and prohibit you from migrating your business to a true fee-based business. Your confidence level will be challenged annually, and you'll be forced to constantly compete on what you have no control over, which is product, thus tainting your view of the industry and ultimately driving you away from creating true wealth from your business. But if you productize your services, your energy and passion for your business will be constantly high. You'll have the needed capital for confident, proper business expansion and be able to truly develop and grow a lifestyle business. So, 
I put that together just to give you an overview of what I wanted to go through today because this is an important topic. If you get this, this will be a real stepping stone, a real leverage point for you to be able to just take your business to the next level. So what I really want to do is I want to go through and and go through everything that I've ever come across in, in terms of how to productize your business and basically have honed it down into a few different things that you can think about so that you can gain some clarity on what it is that you need to do. So answer me this. Are these challenges or opportunities right now? True or false, you as a financial advisor are suffering through a totally skeptical and mistrusting public, primarily caused by the avalanche of negative articles and reports of scandals in the media. And the resulting compliance panic at the home offices has made an already tough marketing and promotion situation nearly impossible. True or false? What would your answer be to that? Well, what messages are you getting from your head office? The dealers and head offices are saying, you need to reinvent yourself. You need to be able to, prov pr to prove your value and articulate it in such a way to justify the embedded revenues you're receiving. The industry is working its way into a commoditized frenzy, and in my opinion, they're encouraging you to race to the bottom. Embedded fees are being challenged, and in many respects, this is a good thing. However, nobody's showing advisors how to reinvent themselves, but everybody's telling them they need to do it. Dealers and head offices are quick to tell you what you're doing wrong, but they have no idea how you can do it right, because there's no guide for that. They just have no clue themselves. They're just telling you what you need to do and basically putting all the onus on you. New reps, the ones who you know us veterans are supposed to pass our torch on to, they're dying painful deaths all while experienced advisors are seeing their incomes drop. Seasoned veterans who have not embraced the idea that you must build a business and not just a job are holding on for dear life for as long as they can and then they'll retire with very little to show for it. It's actually quite sad. Our industry can't be built on this type of foundation. It needs to be built on a more solid footing where we follow the logic. Some people are calling our, for our industry to be seen as a profession. That's a big stretch in my mind. I personally don't think this will, this will be possible, but it's not a bad beacon to aim for. It's not a bad idea to sort of look at that and to use that as a bit of a direction point. Um, but however, I just don't believe that we're going to be able to make it our way to be able to consider, be considered a complete profession simply because we do have an embedded commission model built into the industry. Let's look at the medical profession and let me ask you how this scenario would go over if it was ever followed in the medical world. You walk into a doctor's office with a stomach ache. Your doctor says that he has come across this amazing medication that he wants, you to, wants to talk to you about that has shown to help with mental alertness. You tell him that your stomach hurts. He tells you that he has done a lot of research on this mental alertness medication and he feels that it would be a great solution for you to consider. So he prescribes it to you and you take his lead. I mean, he's your doctor for goodness sakes. So your stomach still hurts, but you also feel more mentally alert. Success? Well, let's see. You went to the doctor because you had a stomach ache. You were prescribed something for mental alertness, which really is a good thing, although you still have a stomach ache. What if I told you that the doctor you went to wasn't affiliated with a company that helped people with stomach aches? which is why he gave you the best medication he had, which was for mental alertness. Well, you'd be frustrated. What if I told you that the doctor generated a commission from prescribing to you the mental alertness medication? Well, now you'd probably question his motivation for prescribing it to you. What if a few years later you found out that the mental alertness medication now had negative side effects that nobody knew about before? You'd be wondering how much a lawyer would cost to sue this doctor for malpractice. Now, Let's look at how this situation could be fixed. You go to the doctor because you have a stomach ache. The doctor reviews a full series of questions with you to determine if it makes sense for you and he to be working together because you only want to work with a doctor who can help you with a stomach ache. And the doctor only wants to work with you if he feels he can be of service to you. So you have an initial meeting to do a high level review. During the review, the doctor touches on some other items that had been bugging you but you'd learn to kind of live with. And the doctor also touched on some things that you didn't even know you should be concerned about. In other words, this doctor allowed you to learn about things you didn't know you didn't know. You both feel, you know, that it makes sense to explore the main issues that you came in to see about, uh, you know, which was your stomach ache, 
but also to look at some other things that may relate not only to your stomach ache, but also to your overall health. The doctor sends you home with a checklist of information to gather together and bring with you to the next meeting. Between your first and second meeting with the doctor, you receive a letter from your doctor stating the key items that you discussed. And the letter also identified some other areas that you'll be, dis you'll be discussing further at your next meeting. So how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling pretty confident with this doctor's approach? You bet you are. You show up to your next meeting with all of the information he asked for. You review everything. You discuss the main areas of your concern, your stomach ache. You discuss some other areas that deal with your overall health, and you realize that there is a high probability that your stomach ache is being caused by some of the other health issues. The doctor indicates that they feel they'll be able to work and assist you with your stomach ache, but more than that, your overall health and wellness. The doctor then presents to you a process that, he, process that he'd like to work with you through to ensure no area of your overall health is overlooked and that not only your stomach ache is fixed, but your health is benchmarked so you can monitor whether you're getting healthier or sicker each year. This way you can make adjustments along the way to always ensure you're moving closer to your optimal health as opposed to far away from it. How do you feel when the doctor indicates that they can do this for you and all you have to do is join their program for a fee and you can get started? Basically, you feel that as long as the value you're going to receive from this program is higher than the fee you're going to be charged, you're all over it. Isn't optimal health really what you're looking for? This type of approach is a much better approach now because after going through the program, you will have a much better understanding as to why something might be prescribed for you. In essence, you'll see exactly why you need any prescription. So why then do the mutual fund dealers, the securities dealers and insurance companies, why do they never show you how to do this? Well, it's simple. The product manufacturers are not advisors. They're product manufacturers and the dealers don't know how to regulate advice. The clients, however, want this type of process to feel comfortable that the solutions they're implementing are indeed the right ones for them. So take that methodology and just put it onto our business, our industry. So how then do we migrate our business away from the malpractice model of solutions before advice to the advocacy model of advice before solutions? How do we create a business that isn't just a glorified job? How do we build true wealth? And I mean true wealth. For ourselves, not on the backs of our clients, but in conjunction with them. Well, I've studied this topic and continue to do so, and I have found that there are three distinct stages all fee-based financial planning firms must go through to get to the top. Stage one is called the building a foundation stage. Stage two, the securing the future stage. And stage three is the scalability stage. So let's talk now about all of these different stages, okay? We're gonna start with stage one. What is stage one? Well, consider stage one as your newborn, okay? Just pick, put it, if you, if you have children, uh, or if, you, uh, if you, you're in contact with young children, generally, I mean, this, this example works best when it's, your, when it's your own child. So think of your own child. It's critical that you do what is necessary to keep that child alive. It's a baby. So treat it as such. This is your business. So treat it as such. It's, a, it's a, your baby. Your... Don't waste time on things that don't matter. But don't take your eye off of it because it could roll over, sit up, and walk at any time. And if you haven't laid a foundation for it to walk on, it will trip, fall, and potentially never get up again. If you're running marketing campaigns and drawing a salary from your business, you're not in the building a foundation stage. You're in what's known as the securing the future stage. The building a foundation stage, this is your startup stage. It's your, the stage where your idea moves into reality. It's your, heck, it's your, your fearful stage. It's your fear, but it's also an excitement stage. It's your harsh reality stage. At this stage, you are a startup. You're bootstrapping your business. You're not making any money yet. It's critical you get through this stage as quickly as possible. Because if you don't, you'll be learning the phrase, would you like fries with that? All too soon. I've found that those who keep their eye on the ball in this stage are the ones who make it through the quickest. It's not a glamorous stage at all. Believe me. In this stage, all you are focused on is getting your value equation correct. 
You need to make sure the value you're delivering your clients is far greater than the price they're paying. This stage is all about you and your customer because you and your customer are all that matters at this point. What is the cost of your products and services? Make sure that the value of those products and services is greater than the cost to bring them to market. I mean, that sounds like you know, business 101, but believe me, a lot of people miss this first step. Make sure the value of your products and services is greater than the cost for you to bring them to market. This is a tough equation to work out for most people who are wanting to migrate over to a fee-based financial planning model. This is the one thing that all dealers and head offices are telling you you need to do, but they're doing an absolutely horrible job at showing you how to do it. The dealers and head offices, they really have no clue themselves. The equation they keep telling you to use is to figure this out. Determine how much you want to earn in a given year. Determine how many hours it takes you to deliver your services to your customers and then figure out the math for what you need to earn per hour. Then this will encourage you to determine what the minimum case size is you should accept, etc, etc, etc. Well that is total crap because in this business this, this formula is completely backwards. To make a success as a fee-based financial planner you've got to turn that formula backwards. Why limit yourself at the beginning by putting a cap on your annual income? My answer to this question was, you know, when they say, well, you know, uh, how much do you want to earn? Well, my answer is always, as much as I can. So why then would I choose a number that could be too low? It just, to me, didn't make any sense. So you need to turn the equation around and start with your value. Start with the value you would like to deliver to your clients. It's really an important, important not to get caught at the stage in the keeping your hands busy syndrome. And I've seen this happen, oh heck, I've, I've had it happen to myself and I've seen it happen to too many other advisors going through, going, trying to build a business in, in this industry. Don't spend a lot of time on your website. Don't spend a lot of time on your logo. Don't spend a lot of time on your automation. Don't spend a lot of time on keeping your hands busy on things that don't bring you closer to your value equation. This is the most important part of this stage. If you don't get your value equation right, you're going to burn yourself out and burn yourself out of your money. It's virtually impossible to get a return on your investment at this stage if you spend time on the things that don't directly help you find your value equation. So how do you focus on your value equation? Ask yourself this question. What is your offer? To answer this question, you need to focus on these components. What is your promise and what is your process? So let's start at the beginning here. What is your promise? One of the biggest challenges we as fee-based financial planners have at this stage is that we oftentimes aren't able to narrow our offer down to one single promise. We tend to do something for one client, then something for a different client, and something for another client and then continue to offer a different promise to each client that makes it virtually impossible to get to the next of the three stages, let alone to the next client. We burn ourselves out doing something different for each client. Did you hear what I just said? It was important. We burn ourselves out doing something different for each client and then wonder why we can't grow past a certain point. Most financial advisors will chase down every opportunity they find, which leads you to doing a different thing for each client. You know, an investment opportunity here, an insurance opportunity there, a financial plan opportunity there. How on earth do you build a business when you're doing so many things for each client? There's no consistency of your promise, which leads it to being virtually impossible to deliver a consistent promise using a consistent process. The problem you face at this stage is that if you don't get a consistent promise, you can't scale. So how do you solve this stage? Focus on making the distance between the price of your service and the value a client receives as great as possible. You need to figure out how to deliver to a client, say, 10 times the value for the price they're paying. Get this stage right and people will break down your door to work with you. Paul Sutter, he's the founder of a company called Quantcast, says that he wants his clients to say, I'll take as much as you have when they find out the price of the product or service he's offering. One of the investment councils we work with has a very disciplined process he uses to ensure that he only buys dollar bill stocks or dollar stocks for 80 cents. In other words, when you find someone selling a dollar for 80 cents, you say, I'll take as much as I can afford. This is what you need to do with your financial planning services.
So when you know that you can promise an experience to a client and you can use your unique process to deliver that promise, when you come across someone who you know would benefit from your promise, you have a very high probability of closing that sale with that lead. I know when I meet with a business owner that I can explain to them what my promise is. I can show them the process we use to deliver that process promise. And when I tell them what the price is for that service, there is a high, and I mean very high probability, that they will anxiously find a way to do business with me. And don't forget that I don't charge less than $2,000 for our financial planning services. So don't tell me that this fee-based financial planning doesn't work. You just don't have a good offer that has a great promise attached to it, and a great promise and a price that is irresistible. So what can you do today then to make your offer better? Well, take a look at your promise first. What are you promising? You know, are you promising organization, access to unique solutions, financial advocacy, uh, tailored solutions to, for, you know, for specific niches? What, what are you promising? So you, what you need to do is you need to write out your, what your promise is. Write out everything you do and then do one thing that will really just kind of expand it for you. Write out everything you do and then add the words, so that and then complete the sentence. So let's go back and give you an example. You know, I use the examples of, you know, what, when I asked, what are you promising? I said, are you promising organization, access to unique solutions, financial, financial advocacy? Well, let's take a look at this. If you say, well, yeah, I'm promising organization. You say, well, I'm promising organization so that, and then you answer what it is that you're hoping to accomplish with that client with regards to organization. Access to unique solutions so that my clients can and then finish the sentence. Financial advocacy, so that. Tailored solutions to a specific niche, so that. And just answer the question and just expand on it that way. Answering the, the so that will help you paint a picture for your prospect so that they will be able to see the value that you're bringing to them. Did you see what I just did there? I used the so that. Answering the so that will help you paint a picture for your prospect. For your prospect so that they will be able to see the value that you're bringing to them. Put that together, follow that little methodology and start to, out, to list all of your promises so that. Then once you're clear on your promise and why your prospect values it, work on your process. So how do you provide organization? How do you provide access to unique solutions? How do you provide higher probability investment returns? How do you provide financial advocacy? How do you provide tailored solutions for specific niches? The how is going to drive your process. Write out the how you do what you do for each promise. So you're now building a nice story to tell your prospects to help you determine whether or not your services are appropriate for what they're looking for. This is providing you with clarity on what you deliver and providing your prospects with clarity on whether or not what you do is what they're looking for. Take everything that you do and ask and answer this question. Once a prospect becomes a client, what is the first thing I will do for them? Well, the answer probably has something to do with providing them with clarity. You know, it probably starts off with clarity on what they've done thus far. Clarity on where they're at right now. Clarity on what I call their current foundation. How solid is it? How big is it? Will it support what they would like to build, ultimately build? Are there any cracks in it that they need to be, that need to be fixed before you can build on it? Are there any materials that you need, that you, that are no longer appropriate? Is the foundation up to code? This is all in relation to helping build your process for how you deliver what you deliver. So what is it you do? Well, as I'm saying, I'm, I'm really indicating here that you're probably starting off your process with giving your clients or, uh, the ability uh, to, to receive clarity, clarity on various components of their overall financial situation. Then you can present solutions that will make the foundation stronger. Maybe there's new foundation materials that you need to talk about. Maybe there's new waterproofing materials you need to, that you need to incorporate in order to protect against leaks. You know, these are, this is a metaphor I'm using, the building a home versus um, uh, building your process. It's very, 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 very similar. Uh, and remember, this, this stage that we're talking about is the building a foundation stage. 
Uh, maybe there's access to, you know, you have access to purchasing supplies at wholesale versus, you know, just going to the big box stores where you might be able to get it cheaper. But after you, you know, take into account delivery and assembly and all that sort of stuff, it may have been cheaper just to hire a specialist to do whatever needs to be done. So you need to then go through and present your solutions uh, that will, to your clients, that will allow them to gain confidence once they've received the clarity of what it is that they are, what their current situation currently holds. So give them clarity on their current situation, give them clarity on what needs to be done, and then you can slowly move them down the process. So map out then what you do in stages. So maybe the stage one is you review where they're at today. Maybe stage two is you review their you know, areas of, of their concern. Maybe stage three is you establish what the solutions need to accomplish. So what are you trying to accomplish with, with everything? What's the end goal? Stage four could be determining if the existing solutions have the highest probability of success compared to other solutions that you may have available. Uh, stage five, now that you know what you need the solutions to accomplish, what's the best way of implementing the solutions? Do you do it all at once? Do you do it in stages? You know, that sort of thing. Then you move on to the next stage, which could be stage six, where you implement the best solutions after you've analyzed all of the ones and you see how it sort of factors into their overall financial plan, you can then give them a, an implementation solution meeting. Uh, stage seven could be where you then, you review, do a full review and monitor and report on the progress of their overall plan. So now they've implemented their plan, a few months go by, maybe six months go by and you do a review for them and you monitor all the progress and where they're at and where they should be in relation to, um, uh, to, their, to the plan that you'd originally put together. Maybe then stage eight is making any fine tuning adjustments you know, at those review meetings if necessary and implement any new solutions that may be beneficial. You see how we just kind of mapped it out into a stage, stage by stage by stage, this happens, then this happens, then this happens. It's really just like building a computer program. Outlining the how you do everything will allow you to develop a bit of a schematic to use to explain the process to a client. And this process can be, you know, it can be illustrated in a mind map, it can be illustrated in a graphic image, anything you, you can use that will help you show the progression from one stage to the next so the client can see that there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, you know, that's an important point because without the end, people just kind of see a black hole. And this is one of my big issues with lawyers, for example. I never know during the whole process where I am in the process. You know, am I closer to being done? How many more hours am I going to have to pay for? Should I call, you know, should I call my lawyer in the first place? I mean, the big fear about calling my lawyer is that every time I do, there's going to be a fee. And so I want to make sure I do it when I really need to. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult when you don't know what the process is and you don't don't know. It just seems like this black hole that you could die, you could jump into, uh, and those black holes can be very expensive. So the fear of moving forward in a black hole is you never know when it's going to end. So you just say, well, you know, what? maybe I'm not going to start start in the first place because there's too much risk. Well, you need to avoid that. So you need to have a beginning, a middle, and an end to your process so that the, the client can actually or prospect can actually see what it is they're getting involved with and see where they are along the way so that they know how close to the end they're getting. Use this information to help in how you price your solution, okay? If you can successfully establish the value you deliver through your promise so that phrasing, you know, I promise this so that you can accomplish this, you'll have in front of you an outline of something amazing. Then you can determine how much time it takes to deliver the entire solution and put your pricing on the various stages. I know, uh, planners who, who will, will pay will charge a fee for each stage of the process. I personally charge a fee for the overall process. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. This is why I recommend that you charge for the financial planning process you do because a lot goes into this. A lot of work goes into this. Then you can charge for the investment implementation and oversight and then you can receive you know implementation uh, revenues from any of the insurance solutions you put in place. But you need to charge for the initial financial planning process first because that's where the true value is. That's where a client knows, okay, this is what I'm going to pay you for. You're going to take me through this process. I know what the process entails. I know what, what time is required. I know everything about it. I know I'm going to know exactly what investments I should be looking at. I know I'm going to be knowing what, exa what exactly which insurance I should be looking at, who the best companies are, what I should be, you know, I know everything there because it's been all outlined and I'm going to pay you for that. Now, there's no requirement that the client implement, but at the end of the day, the reality is if they've built enough rapport with you, they will probably implement with you. Now, 
what you've done is created a program so that your clients can pay you to participate in it. This program has nothing to do with product. The only product you're promoting here is the process you've created. You have now successfully productized your service. So there you have it. If you can get to this point, you have successfully completed stage one, the building a foundation stage. You now have something you can discuss with leads, speak about and sell to prospects in order to work with great clients who are motivated to work with you through the process you've created. This will drastically increase your client's confidence in their decision in working with you and in referring other people to you. Financial planning is the key. It always has been and it always will be. Building a financial planning process is what clients want to pay you for if you'll just let them which most dealers are getting in the way of and saying they won't even let you do that, which is ridiculous. But if you can carry on and you can build this, this process and you can take your services and successfully productize them, building a financial planning process is what clients want to pay you for if you'll just let them. So get your stage one complete because this screwed up economy is the best marketing opportunity ever. Most people are clueless about how to handle their finances, which means there is a locked vault filled with gold that most financial advisors have no hope of getting at without a successful stage one. In the fee-based Financial Planning Mastery Academy, getting through stage one is our main focus. Stage one is where you can really make a business that is a true extension of you, your uniqueness and your passion, also known as your lifestyle business. Stage one is not about creating a job for you to do every day. Stage one is about productizing your services so that you have a product unlike any of your competitors. Your competition is always trying to bend and mold themselves to fit the current product du jour. You are creating a product that you can replicate, hire others to do, standardize, you know, it's really a scalable process. When you've completed stage one, the building a foundation stage, you will be well on your way to building a business that is worth a lot to you and even more to someone else. So, Check out www.feebasedfinancialplanningmastery.com now to download a free report I wrote called Insider Secrets to Running a Successful Fee-Based Financial Planning Practice if you haven't already downloaded it. So there you go. That is the overall, the overview of how to articulate what it is that you do and make it an extension of you, turn it into, turn your services into a product, name your product, Put the different stages, you can name all the different stages you take your clients through, and then you can put it to a schematic that you can actually sit down and review with prospects and leads and you know introductions and whoever, and you'll gain such clarity on who you should be working with because they're the people you want to be working with, and the people who really your services are ideally suited for, it's going to become very clear to them whether or not your services are right for them. And when they are, they will be just clawing at wanting to work with you, and it will make business so much much more fun. At least I know it does because it's exactly what I'm doing with, with my business and I know it works. So definitely take the time, put together your building and foundation stage, develop your productized business, put together your solutions and really just bring that to the table and start having those conversations with clients. You will be so glad you did. So get out there and build yourself a better business. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on some things that I've been working on recently and some things that I've been spending a lot of time on and it's been been quite an, an interesting process for me. Um, from the development of you know the original uh, episode of the Fee-Based Financial Planning Mastery podcast, um, after we, we released the episode or I released the episode, I started getting you know communication from, um, from other listeners and saying, hey, you know, it'd be great, I love what you're doing, I love the information, I love the methodology and whatnot. Can I hire you to, you know, to uh, um, help us with our business? And, you know, I kept on, you know, writing back saying, you know, I appreciate that. But, you know, that's not my business. This is just more of a hobby. But it happened more and more and more and more. And I had a lot of requests for uh, more information, more assistance and, and that sort of thing. So that was really where the uh, Fee-Based Financial Planning Mastery Academy uh, came from. And we created the Academy 
I basically put together all the methodology and and uh, put videos together. I think there's 136 videos now in the academy. We're constantly adding to the academy uh, with all the new things that we're doing and the new technologies and the new, uh, you know, the new new uh, you know marketing campaigns and you know our experience with various things like Facebook and how we do that and you know we're just basically adding to it over and over and over and and, uh, and that continues. Um, but then people, you know, kept coming to me and say, hey, you know, I love it. Uh, this started actually happening from a lot of Canadians. And a lot of Canadians said, listen, you know, I, I love the methodology. I love the, the approach and I'm going to my dealer, but they're just not letting me do it. They're not letting me put the referral agreements in place. We've started to receive an indication that some dealers are actually limiting the number of uh, percentage of the client of, of your business's assets under management or under administration uh, or in, in our world, the assets that you have um, oversight over, uh, they're limiting those assets to a certain percentage of your business. And once, once the assets that you have under administration exceed, in many cases, it's 50%, then they start putting you on, you know, extra monitoring. Uh, we've had other dealers who have started to come to the table and are saying that they're going to start increasing the fees to uh, advisors who who work in in that capacity. And if they're wanting to do uh, fee based financial planning and they're wanting to charge fees for the financial planning, uh, for some dealers are out now just saying no, they're not going to allow that to happen um, because they just don't want to have to incur the liability. Well, they see it as liability. I see it as actually reducing liability. Uh, but they're just, you know, a lot of this is happening and they're getting a lot of pushback and a lot of um, negative uh, pushback, I, I should say, from something that I was always under the impression the dealers wanted you to do. Uh, but what the dealers are wanting you to do is find a, a way of justifying the embedded commissions that you're receiving, not in making everything very uh, extremely transparent. Well, I think they're going in the wrong direction. And so other dealers are starting to increase fees uh, to uh, planners who are going down this route. Uh, and they're just causing problems. Frankly, they're just simply causing problems. So as a result of this, we've had a lot of people say, hey, listen, I know you were, you know, you did have a mutual fund license for a while, uh, and then you dropped your license. And how did you operate your business while you had your mutual fund license? And why did you drop your license? And since you did drop your license and you made that transition and migration over to uh, a true fee-based and referral agreement structure with your uh, the investment counseling firms and so on and so forth, and all the technology that you're using, uh, because remember, Remember, as soon as you leave your dealer, uh, there's no technology that you can take with you, and pretty much you you leave everything behind. How did you do that? And, and is there anything that, that people can can do? Again, they're asking me, can I, you know, license your your financial planning um, CRM, your Salesforce technology, and all the automation? Is there any way of getting a copy of that? All this, are, and these are great questions. And the problem we always had was that we really, you know, that wasn't our day job. You know, I'm not in the business of, of putting together software. I'm not in the business of uh, of any of that. I was just, I'm in the business of my bread and butter business is running a fee-based financial planning firm. And one of my hobbies is is uh, speaking to you on the, the podcast. And so what we recognized was that there was a real opportunity in Canada. And so what we've done is we've actually taken the time over the last year and we've created the very first, the, what we, of what we know, it's the very first Canadian uh, fee-based financial planning syndicate uh, that is now available to Canadian financial planners. And so if you're running up against those challenges and you're running up against a situation where you're finding the dealer who you're with is either maybe it just doesn't make sense to continue with them any longer or, um, you know, I know with my old dealer, uh, you know, one of the benefits to working with them is that their fees were quite low and so you were able to retain more of the revenue and that's recently changed. I understand that they're now uh, increasing the fees to all the advisors and, and it's just, you know, th times are changing. That's plain and simple and that's exactly what's happening. So what we've done is we've created the first Canadian fee-based financial planning syndicate, and it's called the CANI, C-A-N-I, CANI Financial Planning Syndicate. And C-A-N-I is simply just an acronym that stands for Constant and Never-Ending Improvement. Now, this is the first time we've ever sort of gone publicly um, on, the, on, the, on the show to really explain what it's all about and to, to get into further details. Uh, and basically what I'm saying now is that if you're running down that road and you're uh, getting, down the, getting to the, the stage where you're just frustrated and you're saying, you know what, I now recognize that the fee-based financial planning business model where you drop your license and you move to a direct referral relationship with your investment counseling firms, I now recognize that that is a model that is more for me and I really it resonates with me and it's something that I really want to want to entertain so what we've done is we've created the uh, the can I financial planning syndicate 
And the purpose of the syndicate is to group together and bring together all like-minded fee-based financial planning practices from across Canada to, you know, in order to pool together all of our, um, uh, our production through, uh, the, to the investment counseling firms who we work with. Some firms, uh, require certain minimums. Um, and so some people were saying to me, listen, I don't, don't even have enough assets in order to set up a relationship. A, I don't even know how to set up a relationship, you know, and there's a lot that goes into that. And we've spent a lot of time. We also took the time to, uh, over the past year or so, to take all of our technology, all of our Salesforce technology, and we now have uh, what we call Can I Connect. And Can I Connect is a solution that allows you, once you've joined the syndicate, you now get a full carbon copy of exactly all the tools and methodology and business uh, automation and workflows and everything. You basically get your own Salesforce instance uh, customized exactly the same way that mine is customized. Uh, and anytime we make upgrades on our system, it gets upgraded onto your system, and we just keep on doing that. And really the purpose for that was to, because we recognized that everybody needed a platform, a CRM platform that they could turn to. And part of my success has been uh, in making sure that our business runs very efficiently and the only way that we've been able to do that is through the automation of our uh, Salesforce instance so we created can I connect spent a lot of time a lot of money uh, in actually putting that together and so that's now uh, part of the uh, the solution you also gain access to all the investment counseling relationships so all the relationships and referral agreements are already in place uh, and you basically are able to uh, charge whatever your uh, your fee is for the investment implementation and oversight uh, you're able to charge whatever that fee is and we can we can but you're all set for having that run through. All of your credit card processing for all of your financial planning fees can all be done through your tablet or your iPhone or smartphone. Uh, just swiping your credit card, it goes into our merchant account, and then those revenues get flowed back to you. Uh, so everything's all set up. We've kind of set, we basically looked at it and said, you know what, we really have an opportunity here with the community that we've built. Uh, we now have the opportunity of building a stronger community that will benefit everybody at the same time. I'm not a real believer of uh, designing something that only benefits one person. That's why when I talked about uh, in one of the previous um, previous communication pieces or pieces of content with regards to an MGA, it's, you know, I, I never liked it when the MGA won more than you did. Uh, I want to make sure that anything that gets set up is a win-win-win for everybody. And in this case, we've got a win-win-win where we find we've got all the technology, all the relationships. Uh, we've got a, an MGA that uh, supports all of the fee-based financial planning methodology payouts are higher they basically everything we talk about in the uh, the MGA section uh, of this content uh, we put together an MGA uh, to allow that to happen we've got uh, some of the the highest payouts uh, on the MGA side we've got definitely uh, the highest payouts on the uh, investment side because you get to choose what your payout is um, and your your fee for the implementation and oversight uh, we've got um, really just a big a, a, a nice business model where uh, anybody who joins and wants to become a member of the can I financial planning syndicate uh, is then asked to actually become an owner of the syndicate and so we're looking to not just create a, a, a structure where we bring on lots of agents just like the traditional structure I don't want that at all I want to be working with partners I want to be working with people who are um, like-minded and who really follow the idea of building a bigger pie uh, overall makes better sense for everybody as opposed to try and take more of of a smaller pie and so really what I'm trying to do with this uh, with this structure is I recognize that there was a real need for it and so we put everything together so if you're interested in having a further conversation about the can I financial planning syndicate uh, then please send me a note and we can uh, initially anyways if this becomes something that gets a little overwhelming we may need to put it into a webinar series uh, where we express some of our um, you know, go through all the information uh, via a webinar. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, you have a chance to have a conversation. Uh, we can go through all the details. We can do a demo and I can show you how all the technology works and all that sort of thing. Uh, but if it's something that, you know, that, to, that does resonate with you. Now, it's not something where you necessarily have to have a certain minimum level of production, uh, although it does probably make sense for, for you if you do have a, a, a book of business. But we have, um, um, you know, I do think it, it makes a lot of sense for building your, your practice from scratch uh, because it gives you everything 
you need uh, as a turnkey. Um, you basically just step up and you start pro- uh, you start implementing. Uh, plus, it always it also gets you one on one coaching with myself uh, for every new syndicate member uh, who joins up. We sit down and we go through full days of uh, coaching with you to sort of get you on board, get the technology working for you, and then to get the methodology working for you, so you can have better conversations with your clients and prospective clients in order to uh, start going down the fee-based financial planning path. So if you're interested in that, by all means, send me a note. Just send an email to scottplaskett at ironshield.ca, and then we'll get back in touch with you in order to arrange for a convenient time to do an online, uh, have an online conversation, and we'll go through a bit of a demo uh, if if that's of interest as well. But really, I just want to make sure we can answer any questions that you have. It is the first uh, financial planning syndicate uh, that I'm aware of in Canada, uh, and I think think that the, um, with the amount of demand that we are seeing and the amount of uh, email communication and, and phone calls and what that I'm getting from people uh, and everybody who I've talked to about this really feels that it's the, the next evolution of, uh, of how a fee-based financial planner can make, uh, make their business become a true extension, a true lifestyle business without having to, be, having to go through the restrictions that they're currently, currently experiencing uh, by maintaining their uh, uh, MFDA or IROC license. So if that's something you're interested in, please, by all means, send me a note. We can have a conversation about that. Uh, I'd be more than happy to go through that. And, you know, maybe it's something that's uh, that's in line with what you're looking for. Maybe it's not. Uh, but I think that if you are wanting to go down that financial planning path, it may be something to uh, to seriously consider. So by all means, give me a, give me a note. I know I've spent a lot of time on this. And uh, I think we've got a solution that's uh, a win-win-win for everybody. So I look forward to hearing from you if you're interested. In, uh, and if not, then uh, stay tuned for the next episode when we're going to start talking about some even more uh, great information on how to migrate your business to a fee-based financial planning business. You've been listening to Scott E. Plaskett, a certified financial planner and industry veteran in the world of fee-based financial planning. Want free resources to help you build a better fee-based financial planning firm? Visit ilovefinancialplanning.com right now to register for Scott's Inner Circle email list where you'll get front-of-the-line updates on the latest resources that are driving profits to Scott's fee-based financial planning practice. All of the resources are pulled directly from the highly acclaimed Fee-Based Financial Planning Mastery Academy. Go now to ilovefinancialplanning.com. Build a better business and make more money with your fee-based financial planning practice today. 